I'm not a movie director. <laughs> I am not. But at least they tried, they showed us destinations. Well, it was very cringe to watch, honestly speaking. It looked like she had also suffered the way Emma suffered. And it would have been nice to show that setting of her life. How, when, who, how, how did it happen? <laughs> they didn't even give us answers, so we're just making answers for ourselves. <laughs> Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If it's your first time on my channel, you're welcome. Please don't make it your last. Subscribe to my channel so you'll be aware when I post a new video. If you're a returning subscriber, it's so good to have you back. My name is Chineyama Adoma Anoka. Today we're going to be reviewing the movie Glamour Girls. Before Netflix released this movie last week, I actually saw the old Glamour Girls just so I could understand the storyline and you know compare, contrast, and all of that. So basically, this movie is about high-end sex workers luxury sex workers not just the random ones you see luxury sex workers and the glamorous life they live and like the behind the scenes of their glamorous life and in this movie we have the key characters donna played by Nse Etim, emma played by sharon Oja, Gemma played by jocelyn dumas lulu played by tokema kenwa and these ladies have their different lives donna is basically the pimp basically she packages these girls and gives them up to guys she pays them and she has her own life. She's married to a guy. She's obviously older than and she's basically controlling him in the marriage. That aside, Lulu is married and has kids. And surprisingly, we didn't even know that she had kids or she was married. I actually thought the guy she was making a video call with, Uzo Arukwe, was her boyfriend, not her husband. But yeah, she's married to Uzo Arukwe, a very robotic man in this movie. And he stays abroad. Emma is the next person, played by Sharon Oja. She's from a poverty-stricken home. She has to fend for her siblings and she was fired from her job because someone who we we'll let her get to framed her. And because he framed her, they basically, should I say, sacked her from her Ashawo job. And she came to Donna to look for greener pastures. And then we have Gemma, who is a retired sex worker. Retired because she actually used to work with Donna and then she broke the rule by falling in love, getting married and having a child. So basically, this movie revolves around these women. There are also some characters, but these are the women in this movie. And basically, this movie is just about the glamorous life, how they live the life, how they get the money to live the life, and then the aftermath and generally. This movie was directed by Bumi Ajakaye. It was written by Kemi Adesoye. It was produced by Abimbola Craig for Play Network Studios. It was filmed in Lagos and then they actually went to Lebanon and somewhere else to film the rest of the movie. So now, this movie actually is supposed to show, you know, uh, the business of sex work and basically the bad sides to it. When I saw Glamour Girls 1994, I just saw ladies who are desperate to travel abroad. They find themselves in Italy. They are, you know, deceived into prostitution and all of that but in this one they are very aware so emma after she lost her job came to donna for help and donna of course rejected her and the two other girls her friends she came with they had all thumbed out and then emma who had thought of her life her siblings her family decided to come back to donna strip basically not like she stripped like everything but down to her bra and her undies just to showcase her body and to tell Donna okay this is what I bring to the table I don't have certificates because literally Donna was asking if they had gone to school and everything so to show you that this their a shower work is not just the kind of sex work that you random on these ones you have to probably go to school because the clientele is totally different Emma shows up and she doesn't have all of that she showcases her body Donna sees what she likes and Donna asks her PA to you know tuition her up to make her look good so just like that Emma becomes one of the glamour girls the acting in this movie was actually okay I feel like some of the characters played their roles very well Nse is a boss as always and I think she played her role very well Sharon was also good in her role if you have seen Olo Ture you will know that Sharon has also acted something similar to that so I'm thinking that was what inspired her role in this movie however I cannot but notice the fact that at the beginning 
when she was speaking pigeon it was funny and i don't know if it's, if this is because sharon normally is a classy person and the pigeon thing it looked like she wanted to laugh and she was hiding the laughter i don't know if anybody noticed that but i noticed that but i think she killed her role and i think she acted very well for toke makinwa we've been seeing toke in some movies recently and i'll just have to say that i think she's okay but i feel like sometimes it's forced like she brings so much energy into it it's too dramatic it's so dramatic that it doesn't look natural jocelyn dumas also did good she's classy as always and she always has this calm acting i've never really seen her act a gra gra role in all the movies i've seen her in she has this classy aura this classy persona about her so yeah i think we still saw that in the movie the camera quality was okay i'm not really into filmography and all those things so obviously i can't give detailed details but from what i saw i think they did very good the music was okay in some scenes but in some others i think it's it was off it was off there were some scenes that didn't need the kind of music they used for it for the costume and makeup i think they did amazing the name glamour girls and the costume was amazing like you could see the glamour is that one i think they killed it there so yes i think the costume was good the makeup too was also good you'll notice that before sharon was transformed into the classy emma when she came with her friends she had this tacky makeup on she was basically looking like an ordinary girl and i think the makeup that makeup fits what is it they literally gave her this amateur makeup the kind of makeup that somebody that hasn't you know like pimped off or someone that hasn't like worked on herself to do she looked like a basic girl and they gave her a basic makeup so i love the fact that I paid attention to details concerning the hair makeup and costume especially the makeup and costume because if you notice before emanuela was pink her friends were also looking basic they were looking like basic sex workers but after they worked on her you could see that she had transformed and the makeup transformed with her so for this movie i have so many questions and i think that there are so many missing links there were so many characters in this movie and we just had two hours now if this movie was like blood sisters where it was you know taken down to a mini series then they would have taken time to flesh out the backstory of the characters but everything was in two hours with so many characters so so much was going they were trying to flesh out some stories they were trying to round up some stories and it just looked like a jumbled mess. There were themes that should have been expatiated on and then there were things that they were not necessary. Guys, I'm going to break this down and explain what I mean. My first criticism would be the lack of a backstory. Now, like I said earlier, they had so many characters. Toke was there as Lulu. Donna was there. Emma was there. Gemma was there. Hell was there. The first thing, Toke with kids, how? Uh, the, the first thing we saw of Toke, she was making a video call with a guy who we didn't even know was her husband till eventually. Next thing, her husband comes to Nigeria and then we're seeing her in her kid's birthday party and we're like, kids, how? Okay, we didn't even know she was married or if that was her guy or whatever. Then now, she now has kids and the kids are even grown. It was funny that they didn't say anything about that. They didn't talk or they didn't even she didn't even in any conversation before they showed the kids say oh i have to pick my kids from school or you know something about the kids they didn't say anything about her having kids they should have said something just giving a background basically about her life her married life her married with her kids in nigeria her husband in abroad somewhere that we don't even know why she was giving him money and all of that they just shoved that information in our faces the next one was hell Hell supposedly was from a rich family, so she was just doing the sex work thing and going into drugs, not because of the money, but because she was trying to be rebellious. I feel like Hell's story would have made more sense if they had shown us more about it. Give us a hint of the family, a hint of the background of her family, maybe a scene, something, a confrontation with her mom, her parents. And just an outburst of why she's living that life for the kind of life she settled for. Because they basically introduced this drug addict girl who died while she was pregnant. I feel like her character was brought up and killed, literally killed 
almost immediately without giving us a background story a backstory of what exactly her life entails people like to relate to things the reason people watch movies and enjoy movies is because they can relate it doesn't have to be all glitz and glamour we can see the glitz and glamour they made it obvious but why is this girl from a wealthy home doing this kind of work there should have been a backstory to hell's life Gemma had an interesting life and i felt that there should have been a backstory to that they just showed her husband who was just a random guy first time seeing him in a movie and then he died and then we can only hear from word of mouth oh the Gemma oh during her time she was the it girl she was this she was that there should have been a backstory to that they should have they should have invested in that they should have shown us a hint of what it was like they basically just introduced her and then through word of mouth they said what they wanted to say about her there were so many missing links in the story and i think i've seen so many questions about this the first one would be when Toke's husband lulu when lulu's husband came into the boutique and you know he knew that she was cheating she was doing something then he went into the room and he saw something that they never showed us and people kept asking what did he see now i saw a post on twitter where someone was like um if you are if you're reading the subtitles you see in bracket where they said men discussing indistinctively or something like that so with that we can assume that she was probably having a threesome or sex with many other guys so i just used that one to just compensate myself like okay secondly what was alex doing to Gemma's kid guys this movie is a rated 18 movie they showed sex scenes even without the scenes they made some nasty noises so why couldn't they just show a scene of alex doing something to the kid or even if they felt like that was tmi so much information they should have said it he was molesting my kid but they never said what alex did to the guy even if i or my own had already noticed okay this man comes into their life and then the boy is acting this way so definitely something is up the guy cannot be too good to be true then they wake up and the, then she wakes up that night and she doesn't see him there so i'm like oh definitely this guy is molesting her child which is why the boy has been acting gloomy but not everybody is going to understand it this way to make matters worse they didn't even make it more interesting by at least showing us a confrontation the fights that led to Gemma killing alex they didn't show any of that that was a huge that was a very important tip that i feel like they should have shown another thing that i felt was a waste of time why was abimbola creating that movie yes yeah, she was chief's wife okay they never for once showed her with chief she was just this high and mighty woman moving around with girls what was her role in the movie yes i guess that i get that she produced the movie for play network and sometimes they like to you know get involved but this movie would have done so well without her in the movie the time they spent on her things they would have used it to flesh out other important characters story i'm telling you that this movie would have gone very well if abimbola creates did not appear in the movie the storyline would have still gone very well nothing would literally be missing and this is why i'm saying that they put so many characters and they were struggling to just finish up their story in two hours and it just made a mess of the whole thing another thing that confused me what was the reason for meeting the old glamour girls now i get that they wanted to you know show appreciation or what just pay homage i don't really know how to explain it but i feel like the circumstance with which they introduced the old glamour girls was totally unnecessary if they really wanted to show us old glamour girls they should have shown us at the beginning maybe if donna was having a meeting with her other girls then the old glamour girls will be present at that meeting and then you can see the boss's boss but literally donna traveled to where lebanon to meet the old glamour girls and they said we will see what we can do about it and they never really did because they figured out their situation without them i felt like that scene was unnecessary and even if they felt that it was necessary to put the old glamour girls in the movie they should have put them at the beginning of the movie where they didn't have to meet them to solve any problem that they eventually did not solve so many questions how did donna have the flash drive at the end because we know that there were just two flash drives right one was empty and then the other one had the money which emma had put in zeribe's bag and zeribe put it back in her bag and yes they handled that and they left and then donna brought out flash drive from her wig not just any flash drive but the flash drive had money 
basically the money that they are all scrambling for how when who how how did it happen <laughs> i feel like they spent so much time on the glamour and then at the end they just squeezed the action into it like it didn't make any sense i'm sure they were thinking that at the end of this movie people would be like oh my god wow this is the plot twist at the end how did they do that why did they do that they felt like people would be fascinated but it just left me confused absolutely confused because one hour into this movie i was watching this movie with ife if is my husband and then one hour into the movie he's like do you understand anything now i'm like i don't but let's just see because <laughs> i thought that movie was for two hours and then one hour 30 minutes like 30 minutes after he asked me i was like well i'm going to bed later tell me how the movie ended guys i sat there till the end of the movie and when it was done i was like what is this this is so confusing how on earth why did um Zerebe try to frame emma up when they had even agreed when it even looked like they were in love and they had even agreed that they were going to ask on the money it didn't make any sense to me segi caught abishegi caught um heard Zerebe having sex with emma and they just showed him boning and you know i was like hmm, this guy is going to deal with the two of them but he didn't do anything to them what was the need of that scene that scene was totally unnecessary there was no need for it he sh- they shouldn't even have shown that he saw them or he heard them making love because it just made him powerless okay he heard them making love even after then they were still living in the house they were still sleeping on the same bed and nothing happened the only thing was that at the end um he was like and my last one she was like i don't want to go with you or whatever that did not make any sense to me that was extremely confusing so basically they are saying that even if her her, her guy mr shaggy abisegi <laughs> was a top guy he literally couldn't do anything about his bodyguard sleeping with his girl it made no sense so much was happening because the cast was much they were trying to build the individual stories of each character and it was very it was so confusing it made it, it made the whole thing a mess and this is where people are like what exactly is the storyline going on like what exactly if i'm narrating this movie and i say this is how we started this is the climax this is the end it started okay the climax it was just a jumble of so many things and then the end just went bam like all the way to the end but seeing something crazy at the end how did it get to that this movie would have gone well without some character i felt like the trailer was much more interesting than the actual movie and this was so so disappointing however there were themes that were portrayed in the movie and one thing i like about movies would be themes the good the bad lessons from the movie i feel like if a movie is able to do that i can give them some credit at least for trying to do this and i think this is what they were trying to do there were so many themes in the movie there was child abuse molestation when alex was obviously molesting Gemma's son then we had drug abuse hell story and hell died i guess that they were trying to throw light on that rebellion also because hell was doing this not for the money but because she was trying to be rebellious with her family or something around that poverty was also a theme you could see sharon's story and her family struggle infidelity was also there because you could see that lulu was a married woman and she was cheating on her husband not just married but married with kids prostitution was the major theme in this movie and i feel like they didn't really they didn't really give it an end they basically glorified prostitution in this movie because donna ends up being happy emma doesn't really have any issue because she's still coming back to donna i feel like the only person that really suffered well was Gemma because her son was molested and she killed somebody another missing link when alex's body was dumped into a couch kind of and given to abimbola craig forgotten her name in the movie but yes some people are like um you dumped her body they where did they keep her body but i feel like i feel like because you know this movie they didn't even give us they didn't even give us answers so we're just making answers for ourselves <laughs> We're just making answers for ourselves. So I feel like in that couch, Alex's body was there, but then they used money to cover it up. That's basically what I think. That was how they disposed of his body. So yes, I'm kind of impressed with the movie because of the things. They tried so hard to put so many things. But I feel like this movie would have been better if they made it into a mini series. Not just making it into a movie series, but spending more time on the background of the ladies. Donna seemed like she had an interesting life. 
before the great and glamour before she became popular it looked like she had also suffered the way emma suffered and it would have been nice to show that setting of her life how she was before she became this rich pimp she was this rich pimp but it looked like she had a ghetto life and people love to see that people love to see relatable things and know that oh this lady is a boss lady but she suffered like this she had to kick at it to get to where she was we had we wanted to see something relatable and i feel like this movie would have been that if they had cut down on some characters that were totally not necessary and focused on the ones that they had if they had given more explanation to their backstory lulu the married woman how she got married why she married the man she married how come she has kids she never said anything about the kids they should have shown more on emma's life they literally showed her siblings two times when they came to ask her for money and one time during her flashback and after that nothing would have loved to see they never even showed her showed us when she gave her siblings money they didn't even show the change of life for the siblings at least let's see where the money is entering they didn't show us anything like oh she gave the siblings money and you can see that the siblings are now in school they are doing well officer thank you officer where do you get the money from oh yeah, don't worry just work and they didn't show anything like that we would have loved to see that we would have loved to see her mother come into the picture see the kind of person her mother is see her mother appreciate her and love her mom because now she has money you know i'm not a movie director <laughs> i am not but as an observer i feel like these are things that viewers love to see and i feel like this movie had a good start I feel like the storyline would have been better if they had let some characters go because there were so many unnecessary characters and then they had invested more on the characters that they had because these characters were just polished to what they wanted us to see but there were backstories that left us wondering how where why who what <laughs> for the acting of course Unse impressed me she's good as well and Sharon is doing amazing if you know Sharon you know Sharon from days of skinny girl in trans days when she was shalewa and she was a little sister to abimbola craig in that movie and i would love to say that sharon has done so well for herself and yeah she deserves her accolade so yes for the storyline i think it's bad 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 and that's because like i said earlier there were too many characters and then they were trying to they were trying to round up with all the characters i feel like the storyline would have made sense if they focused on donna Donna's backstory, when she didn't have anything to how she became now, even if it was a flashback, good. Emma, how her life changed and how it affected her siblings. Basically, a general outlook of her life. It would have even been nice to show a scene or two with Emma's friends. Her friends that she came to look for the job, the, her friends she came with when she met Donna. It would have been nice to at least show a conversation with them. How did you, but basically, they just showed them and she gave them money and they were struggling for the money and that was it. It would have been nice if she even helped them. It would have been nice to show us that side of her life. They didn't really, they just, they just showed her and the next thing she has pimped up, her accent has changed and everything just like that. They would have showed us more on Gemma's life and Gemma's husband should have been an actor, not just a random person. When I see random people playing all those kind of roles, I, it just makes me see the movie as not authentic. I know that you have to play actors right, and everything, but it doesn't hurt actually they just use rmd now as Gemma's husband let's see rmd there and know hey okay RMD, you know but just showing us a random guy and then the guy died while he was on life support the guy died and it was rushed i feel like they didn't put attention to the things that actually mattered and they just focused on the glitz and grammar when um emma traveled with donna out of the country she was like hey manela don't arrive bro. what was the need for that scene what exactly was the need for that scene? That scene of Toke and her husband Uzarukwe on video call was weird because I wasn't getting the chemistry between them. And yes, I know that there won't be really any chemistry because Toke is now touched and Uzo is like a very local Igbo man. But still, his husband and wife, they, they just looked like they were from two different worlds. It was very cringe to watch, honestly speaking. I feel like the old glamour girls was better. It had the beginning, it had the climax, it had the ending, and we put it was even part one and part two. And I watched the both of them, and I felt like at the ending I was like, okay, this is how it ended. It made more sense than this. I know that they're trying to revamp, make everything look different, but it just made it more confusing. I feel like they should have just left it the way it was. This movie would have done well without some characters. Abimbola Craig didn't have to be in that movie. So if you scrap all the things that she appeared in and they had used it to say more things about Donna's life, Emma's life, it would have made more sense. 
Secondly, I feel like Hell was not needed in that movie because Hell had an interesting life. She should have shown us her rich family, her rich background, her rebellion with her mother, her siblings, her father, whatever, and the reason she left that life for drugs. But if you're not willing to show us that and you're just showing us a girl who had who had a drug addiction and then she died, it didn't make any sense. She didn't really have any impact in that movie. So it's better you don't show her at all than show her and you know rush it up, make everything hasty. Another character that I felt shouldn't have been in that movie was Chi. Yes, I know he was the main person they were talking to, but what exactly was Ejika Asiobu needed for in that movie? Especially the scene where him and Donna were lying on the ground and they were there was money around them. That movie was more that scene wasn't even needed. Another person that wasn't really supposed to be in the movie, in my honest opinion, is Lulu Tokema Kenwa. This is nothing personal, but I know they were trying to show us the theme of infidelity, married women also being on girls, but they didn't say much about her. They didn't show much about her background. This movie would have gone well without her, honestly. The way they just, if it was that they said she was a divorcee mm-hmm, and she was struggling with her kids, fine. But she's married, she has kids, the kids may not even be her husband's children. Everything was just mumbo jumbo. It was very, very confusing. And I feel like these characters didn't necessarily have to be in the movie. And if Tokyo wasn't there, then Uzo also didn't have to be there. Basically, if they had focused on Gemma, Donna, and Emma, the three, these three ladies, if they had given us their background story and them now in the glamorous life and how it affects their pe- present world and their past world, it was okay. <sighs> there were so many characters, it was so unnecessary. And then trying to unify the plot and unify their stories, it just made it a mess. They actually traveled to places, guys. Because if you watch the old Grammar Girls in 1994, <laughs> where they said Italy, Italy was basically Lagos. Given the Italy had Lagos traffic, you could see the Lagos traffic there, yeah? and then the rest of the Italy destination was in a sitting room that was obviously Lagos. But these ones, at least they tried, they showed us destination. So we can consider consider the fact that they actually traveled to these places and they did just do one kind of photoshop picture magic for us to watch so guys my rating is based on the theme like i said they tried to portray so many themes to you know bring this movie to life and if not that they had put some unnecessary characters if they had actually focused on these themes it would have made sense so Based on the theme, I was kind of impressed. I thought that they could have done better, but I was impressed that they tried to bring all these things to the movie. Poverty, infidelity, molestation, drug abuse, rebellion, you know, all of that. That was a good one. The fact that they tried to bring all of that to the story. Secondly, they are acting, they all tried, but I think Emma did absolutely well. We've seen Inse in such boss role kind of movies, so of course Inse is amazing, but I think Emma did so well because this is not like her normal random kind of movie where she's speaking PG and I was impressed with that. So yes, the acting also impressed me. Thirdly, like I mentioned earlier, Destination, they actually traveled to Lebanon, they actually traveled to the other place. They actually traveled, they didn't do like Glamour Girls 1994 where they showed up Lagos and they said it was Italy. I was impressed with the fact that they did that. At least that showed the glamour thing, that showed authenticity, that showed a bit of realistic stuff. Costumes, you know, I was also impressed with their costume, like I mentioned earlier. Very impressed. Their whole costume showed the whole glamour thing, especially when Sharon was pinned to look like all glamorous and fine from her basic girl look. That was impressive. I like the fact that they all dressed amazing. That was good. Costume and makeup also impressed me. And finally, camera quality, the mood, everything, everything was right when it came to the physical thing. What we were seeing, it was appealing to the eyes. So based on the presence of the themes, the acting, the location, the destination travel, of course, the costume and the camera quality, I'm going to be rating this movie a 5 out of 10. And I know I'm being very generous now. <laughs> Because I've been seeing some very, very mean ratings like 0, 2, 1, 0, 3. But yes, I think that if we try to just move our minds from the fact that the plot twist was very confusing, there were some missing links, and that the story could have been better, I think they put their efforts into other things. And yeah, we should give them kudos for that. So yes, I just rated this movie a 5 out of 
10 and this movie is okay if you want to sit down and criticize and just laugh at some things that don't make sense but don't even go and watch this movie with high expectations especially if you saw the old glamour girls and you're like pumped up for this one you will be very very disappointed so yeah that's my review for this movie i hope you guys enjoyed it please share your thoughts in the comment section how you actually rate this movie please put in the comment section please if you know anybody ranting about this movie send this video to the person and see if they can relate to that and i just want to say thank you so much for my channel i want to say thank you to my new subscribers i'm happy that we're getting this once more i'm really grateful to you guys um yeah if you're yet to subscribe to my channel hello do it right now as, I'm look as you're looking at me do it right now and like this video and comment and just share and just like feel free to be part of the family thank you so that's it for the review please share this video to anyone who feels angry about that movie or anyone whose thoughts may relate with mine or basically anyone that you think will love this video please share this video please like this video please comment also on this video if you have any thoughts that i feel to mention you can also share your rating in the comment section and tell me why you rate the movie as such also if you have any movie you want me to watch and also review please put it down in the comment section i'll see you guys in my next video till then stay amazing so much love for me to you bye